So I'm of the age where I have lots of friends who have toddlers or young children. And a common question I get from these relatively new parents is, how do I negotiate with my terrible two toddler or even worse, is it even possible to negotiate with these little kids? So I have some good news here and maybe some not so good news. The good news is that yes, it is actually possible to negotiate even with little kids. The bad news is it can be a little bit challenging and you have to set reasonable expectations. The reality in some sense is that negotiating with a toddler isn't all that different than negotiating with a really, really challenging negotiation partner in business. In fact, some of the advice we give is the same we might give to negotiating with a difficult negotiation business partner. Now that's probably not super surprising because lots of times when we're in business, we're thinking like, oh my gosh, you are acting like a child here. Today, I'm gonna offer you five tips that I hope will be helpful to you if you are trying to negotiate with your little one to get them to do some pretty basic things. Okay, so the first tip is think about what are the interests of your little toddler. Now, your little toddler probably is not going to be able to articulate their interests in a very clear way. In fact, what they're going to be is very positional. They want to watch Frozen one more time, or they want to hear Baby Shark for the 50,000th time, and you are going to go crazy, right? But what you need to remember here is these are positions, but underneath these positions are interests. And what are some of the interests that toddlers often have? Well, one is to satisfy this newfound curiosity and exploration. They want adventure. They also want to lean into their independence and their autonomy. And if you have a young kid who has just started to walk, right? Suddenly their world has expanded, right? It's expanded beyond maybe their crib or a little playpen to your whole house. That includes putting their fingers into, let's say, the outlet. So distinguishing the position from the interest is really important here. They wanna have fun, they wanna explore. What that means is that you need to frame choices to them in ways that make things feel like a game, that make things feel exciting. You need to meet that interest and autonomy by giving them some sets of choices, right? So instead of simply saying, today we're putting on the pink shorts, say, today we're gonna have an adventure and here are three exciting things that you might wanna wear. Which one will give you the best adventure? So framing things in ways that feel like games and feel like they're getting some choice can be highly successful here. The second one is to acknowledge feelings. So one of the challenges that I've heard from young parents, that their, their kid can be doing fine and then suddenly goes into a tantrum or suddenly becomes demanding or, or super persistent. In that moment, right, it's tempting to either give them what they want or to fight back. But often the tantrum is a way of expressing a set of feelings, right? And often the feeling is something like wanting to be seen or wanting to be acknowledged. And so separating out that need to have the feeling acknowledged from the substantive thing being asked for is critically important. And I would say this advice actually carries over when you're negotiating with an adult who's using difficult behaviors, an adult who's seeming like a crybaby. They're demanding X, Y, and Z, but right behind, right behind that is that there's a whole bunch of emotions. And so there's a way of acknowledging the emotions without giving in on the substance. Third, and I know this isn't possible for every single parent. So when possible, building a negotiation team. What do I mean by this? I think we have to be honest here, right? Dealing with a toddler is exhausting work. And even if you have a partner, it's tiring. And for those of you who are single parents, it's even more tiring. But whether you are partnered or not, most people who have a toddler have at least other adults who are playing roles in that young person's life. Maybe they are a sitter 
or daycare or a friend or your spouse. Each of these people are probably using different strategies to negotiate with your toddler and that can be challenging. So when I say building a team, I mean reaching out to the other people who have interactions with your kids, whether it's grandparents, daycare, your spouse, friends, neighbors, and together using a common strategy, working off a common playbook for dealing with your toddler. I think consistency is really important and, and using some of these skills across caretakers can make a really big difference. Fourth, there are times when you are too harried and your kid is too insistent that negotiation isn't going to work. And that's when establishing something like a safe word or timeout period can be really helpful. So in negotiation with adults, this might be taking a break. In dealing with kids, it might be establishing some kind of timeout moment or word that basically says we're going to be silent now or we're going to go into our corners for two or three minutes so that each of us have a chance to reset and come back and continue the interaction. Because the thing you wanna try avoiding when either your kid is screaming or being insistent and you're at your wit's end is escalation or caving in. The last piece of advice is less about how to negotiate and more about the stance you should have when you are trying to negotiate with your child. And that is go easy on yourself. Negotiation with a toddler is not an all or nothing event. So one of the ways that I might invite you to think about this is to think about, let's say, playing baseball. For those of you who know something about, base about baseball, you know that the very best players are often batting at, let's say, 300 or 350. So for those of you who don't know what that means, that means that about 30 or 35% of the time, the batter is getting up and getting a hit. And these are the best baseball players. So you know what that means? That means 65 to 70% of the time, they are not doing that. And these are the very, very best baseball players. I think when you're dealing with toddlers, if you're batting 300 or 350, that's amazing. So going easy on yourself means continuing to follow these first four steps as much as you can, but also sometimes letting yourself off the hook. Sometimes you really do need to use screen time or a reward to get some compliance. A few weeks ago, I was uh, at my church and there was a family that had four little kids. And as soon as they came in, I thought like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a circus. But the parents came in and honestly, it felt like they set up a pop-up amusement park on the pew in the church. They had toys and little screens and snacks. And on the one hand, I thought like, oh my gosh, this is like, they can do better than this. And then as I sat there, those kids quietly played their little games, ate their little snacks, watched their little screens, and there was no tantrum, no crying, no drama. And I thought, these people know how to pick their battles. And so my advice here, right, is that sometimes you need to just say, I'm not gonna negotiate. Maybe it's I haven't seen my best friend in two years. Or maybe it's I've been fighting all week and I just want some peace at church. Whatever it is, give yourself that space and try to follow the other four rules the rest of the time. So to recap, negotiating with a toddler isn't so different than negotiating with any difficult negotiation partner in your workplace or your business or your family. Five steps that can help. First, consider your child's interests, which are likely to include exploration, adventure, and some independence and fun. Second, when they are acting out, acknowledge their feelings. Third, if it's possible, build a coordinated negotiation team. That is, make sure your partner other caretakers and others who work with your kids are all using the same negotiation strategy. Fourth, when things get out of control, establish a protocol of safe words or timeouts. And fifth, importantly, go easy on yourself. This is hard and sometimes negotiation just isn't an option.
Speaking of when negotiation isn't an option, keep on watching this next video, which is when should you not negotiate at all? Also, if you are new to this channel, I'd be super grateful if you would subscribe. And of course, please hit the like button and the notifications bell so that when I drop new videos, you won't miss any of them. Finally, if you have some advice that you think would be useful to parents, please drop it into the comments. Okay, keep on watching. You wanna know when not to negotiate.